So in this talk, I'm going to uh, go through some great ways to actually practice having uh, perspective in a situation. And um, this can be incredibly powerful, especially if you find yourself stuck, um, if you find yourself repeating the same situation again and again, um, if you find yourself kind of lost in, in emotions, um, or if you're taking insult to something perhaps too easily, um, or just when you kind of feel like I need more perspective. So o over the years, I would hear people say this, like, oh, you just need to get perspective. And it's a, it's a very common phrase. And very often people um, say something like that and they're well-meaning, but very often what we don't hear is how to get perspective. I think we've all had moments where we, we experience it in some way, but it's not always broken down as a cognitive process. So um, the, I think the first time that I heard about this or experienced this was in studying NLP, where we intentionally learned how to disassociate from a situation, which basically means to, to step outside of your body and to see whatever situation you're in including yourself from the outside. So the first time I, I read about this, I thought, well, that sounds really interesting. And I had a vague picture, but I, I really didn't get it or really have an experience of it. And it was after reading about it in several books, I started to get the idea and I started understanding what I needed to do on the inside to have that experience. And, you know, so I just described it one way stepping outside of yourself now you so you might want to start by just imagining that you're actually floating outside of your body and you're seeing yourself at a distance from the outside and noticing how you're standing or how you're sitting um noticing what else is in the scene and really just giving yourself a break and, and observing whatever you're going through as if it's happening to someone else. And this is where um, two things like practice and a bit of variety can have a huge impact. So when I first started practicing this, first of all, it was, it was tricky for me. I wasn't a very visual person. So, you know, if someone described that I could, I could get a vague picture. So since I was more kinesthetic, one thing that really helped me was I would, I would sort of describe the shape of myself in front of myself, almost almost as if I was sculpting myself in in the space in front of me. And that helped me start to picture myself on the outside. I would also imagine a TV screen across the room and then I was, you know, seeing myself on a on a monitor being broadcast. Um, much like when I'm recording this video, I can see myself, although it's more like looking in a mirror. Um, when, when I'm disassociating, I'm seeing myself, you know, perhaps from the side or from behind. And a couple of things that you can play with are, you know, at what distance do you see yourself? You know, you can, you can move the, you can move the image further away or bring it closer to you. Um, or you might like to see it from above. In business consulting, they'll, they'll use the term a lot these days um, to see something from a helicopter or a, a famous phrase over the years in consulting was to see it from the balcony as opposed to the dance floor, it, which I, I believe was you know, borrowed directly from NLP. That, that's my personal opinion. But you get the idea if you're up in the balcony and you're watching people dancing and maybe you're one of the people dancing, then you get that's genuinely a different perspective. Um, and in this case, this is what's often referred to as an observer position or third position, you know, which comes from writing. You have first first voice, second voice and then third. So first position is in your body, seeing things through your own eyes as you typically do. Second position would be stepping into the other person in the interaction if there is someone else there and imagining you're seeing it from their eyes. You're looking back at yourself from the other person. And then third position or observer position is really seeing it from outside, 
just as if you're watching. So a couple of the variables that I mentioned are distance, like are you seeing it from above? Are you seeing it from below? Um, and you could also play with things like the time frame. So if, if this scene is happening now or just happened, you're seeing yourself uh, disassociated in present tense. But you could also imagine, what if you were seeing this from a distance and it was five years ago? You know, would it, would it look the same or would the picture be slightly different? Or if you were seeing this from a distance, but it was five years in the future, even though it's happening now, you can imagine, wow, this is something, this is, this is a meeting or an interaction that's happening in the future. So you can, you can also play with the time frame. Um, another thing that I, I like to explore as I practice this, and this is a practice, it's a cognitive ability. It's something that, it, especially if you haven't done it, I recommend practicing it several times a day uh, until it becomes something that you can do quite easily. Um, so when I first started doing this, I might take a situation where I had a disagreement with someone and there were a lot of feelings that were coming up from me. And then the challenge was to see it from the outside and to do your best to leave all the feelings over there across the room while you're here seeing it just getting the visual data and maybe getting any of the sounds that were there, but all the feelings are over there. As if you're looking at somebody that you didn't know, perhaps you're in, in a restaurant and you're seeing somebody across the restaurant having an interaction. Um, so one thing that I did is I would at times imagine that I was a more objective observer. I might imagine, you know, like, you know, my grandfather's, in general was seemed to be a quite a fair guy. Um, so sometimes I might imagine that I was somebody like him that wouldn't take sides and that would really be looking at the relational dynamics as opposed to this person is right versus that person. So maybe uh, if, if you can think of somebody who you know who's quite fair it might be good to practice stepping into their perspective for a while. Or you can imagine if somebody just hired you to be an objective uh, consultant, how would, you, how would you go? How would you relate to each of the parties? Um, so but these are some of the ways that I, I, I recommend beginning to practice this. Um, I mentioned a, a, a little while ago that it's, it's as if you're watching it on a TV monitor. And for some people, it might, it might actually help to see yourself on a monitor a couple of times till your brain sort of understand, oh, that's what I look like from the outside. Um, years ago, when I was like quite new to public speaking, I, I went to this event where they recorded us. And it was, it was really great. I mean, once I got over the initial like, not wanting to hear my voice, not wanting to see what I looked like from the outside. Once I got over that initial awkwardness, I was able to learn so much by seeing myself from the outside and just really trying to be fair, like, okay, this part I like, this I don't like so much, maybe I can do this differently. Um, another thing I like to look for is what are the relational aspects as opposed to the content of the conversation. So is one person leaning forward, you know, are, are, are the two people leaning towards each other, away from each other? Are they at equal eye level? Is one person speaking more quickly than the other? So those are things that you can notice as well. And um, it will give you a lot of information about what's going on in the situation. And the main thing is it gives you sort of an emotional break you can see this thing over there as if you're just watching a, a TV special and you get to take a break here. And then you might get some ideas about how to run the scenario a little bit differently next time. You might get some insights about how to respond in ways that you didn't 
you didn't know in that particular situation. Um, I would also recommend practicing this a lot in situations that are non-charged, just so you get the hang of sort of stepping out and seeing it from the outside and stepping back in and that movement back and forth. Um, this is definitely one of the most powerful uh, skills that you can learn, um, especially if something catches you off guard, you just to be able to quickly step outside and, and see it and, and uh, at a comfortable distance. Uh, so I, I highly recommend you practice, practice, practice until it's just automatic. Um, and it, it's actually quite a lot of fun. So I hope you enjoy that.